Hello, eBay. Uh, this is my fish tank. 500 gallon tenacore acrylic fish tank with something like 1,500 pounds of live rock in it. Uh, 210 gallon Aquion fish tank with 400 pounds of Texas holy rock. 100 and 20 gallon Aquion fish tank as a sump. The reef tank uh, I came across a couple years ago. Uh, I paid $1,500 for it. It came with uh, three 400 watt metal halides, which are the premium versions, you know, uh, Lumilux reflectors, all nine yards. Uh, came with skimmer, power heads. Heaters, return pumps, sump, um, phosbane reactors, whole, whole nine yards. I uh, sold everything. Um, I was able to get the tank on a payment plan from the guy because he was desperate to sell it. And every time it came time to pay him something, I sold something on Craigslist. Uh, I basically got the tank for free after all that uh, trading around. Um, I kept the canopy, the tank, and the lights. Uh, that's about it. Um, so I can now sell those and actually make a profit. Uh, I got half of the live rock from the same guy for a dollar a pound. So uh, I can actually uh, sell that for two or three bucks a pound and make quite a bit of profit. But uh, that's not the purpose of this, is uh, to get the tank at a good price. Um, I found the tank when these stands were being made for me. These stands were originally meant for uh, uh, two of those 210-gallon fish tanks up top butted together, and I was going to make a canopy that spanned them to make them look like one fish tank so I could have three different ecosystems here, but um, I couldn't pass that tank up. So there is a piece of uh, one-inch thick granite on the on the top of the tank there stand that matches the kitchen granite and kind of ties the the theme together throughout the uh, throughout the house this uh, is a standard fish tank it wasn't reef ready there are uh, two drain holes that were drilled in the back of the tank by my local fish shop that we put one inch bulkheads in the bulkheads are in backwards uh, by most people's way of thinking of how they would go uh, I could have ordered the tank custom with uh, reef ready overflow boxes in there. Uh, they just wouldn't have put the holes in the bottom of the tank. They would have put them in the very bottom back side of the tank. Um, but that would have cost extra. So this was inexpensive to do. Um, it's worked out pretty good. Uh, to be able to put a, a screen on the top so uh, fish won't go down the drain. Uh, you can't fill, fill it up the whole way. It's like an inch short of being full. So um, that's Texas Holy Rock in there. There's 400 pounds. It's worked out very well. Its intent originally was for a predator fish tank. Copepod farm, amphipod farm, uh, water, additional water dilution for the reef tank, um, jail for bad fish, uh, etc. Um, I've recently been given uh, that big tang, and uh, oh, I love him very much. Uh, he's cool. He's a member of the family, but he was a bad choice because he eats so much food and demands so much food that we've had a phosphate problem where before the levels were always um, unreadable. Now they're, uh, you know, pretty high. So now these lights are on all the time to become an algae filter and... Uh, grow the algae down here to keep keep it from out of the reef tank and that's okay I mean it's um, it's, it's kind of like a you know I don't really care for the algae look down there but it doesn't look bad and it prevents the algae from going up top it's being lit by uh, two Kessel 150 uh, light bulbs uh, units I'm very impressed with those they only draw 32 watts of power each they light a six foot tank very well I will be adding a third to eliminate that shadow area in the center, but um, it's not necessary. 
There's also uh, a coral view moon uh, strip up there, so when those lights are off, you can still see the fish. There's a matching unit over there above the sump, so I can uh, see what's going on in the sump at night. Um, these power cords are here on top and a jumble because I keep telling myself I'm going to buy an Apex controller. I just haven't found the scratch to do so. Uh, the overflow box gravity feeds the um, tank down below. There's a ball valve there to help control it. Um, wide open, the ball valve uh, is dumping in the tank, uh, I'm guessing 500 gallons per hour, I'm guessing. Uh, what that ball valve can't take of the overflow, it can travels down the drain tube, goes into another one, which dumps the remainder of it back behind those rocks. Um, with them wide open, I've plugged one of the drains to see if the other drain will take it, and uh, it almost does. Um, it's just shy of handling the load uh, wide open. So uh, normally I have them closed just a little bit, um, um, but uh, to, to make sure that if it, one of them got plugged. But this has been running now for over a year this way without any troubles, so no issues whatsoever there. There is a hose that attaches from there to the back of the sump where I have a matching hole, and the same deal there. There's a hose that attaches to that, to another hole in the back of the sump, and they are dumped out below water level on the sump. It's a four inch off the bottom mark. Um, the sump, 120 gallon Aquion with a Super Reef Octopus 6000 in, uh, external skimmer being fed 750 gallons per hour. Does a great job. It's rated for a 600 gallon fish tank, but uh, this one is about 800 gallons of water. Now, I would have loved to put the bigger one in there, but that's the biggest one that would fit in a 120 gallon fish tank. If I went any bigger, I would have had to uh, use a 180 gallon fish tank. And that would have eliminated the possibility of hanging my reactors on the front of the sump like I do without them sticking out the front of the stand. The other reason is that skimmer was $750. Um, which I'm very pleased to pay. That's a great skimmer uh, for that price. It's just still a lot of money. The next size up is like $1,200, so uh, I would have needed a bigger sump and it would have cost a whole lot more. So, uh, And it does a good job, and it did a great job. Uh, I haven't had any troubles except uh, once I got that free fish up there. Now I have some phosphate issues. Uh, these are some GFO reactors that I made. Um, $15, $15, $15, $15, dollars in plumbing. Uh, most expensive part of the plumbing is the uh, um, quick press fitting joints. These things here, controlled by the ball valve, which is fed by the main return pump. Um, there are little holders in here that hold the GFO. Two and a half cups here, two and a half cups here, it's five cups. The last unit has a holder, but it's filled with a carbon. That's because you don't want GFO residue to make it out of your reactor, because it can get pumped up to the tank where a piece of coral could eat it and potentially kill it. Now, generally, I don't put carbon in here. I put a, a yarn house sediment filter, costs a dollar at the local plumbing store, and it catches the sediment. And then when I change these, I just pull it out and I rinse it, and I, it, it seems to last a very long time. But since my phosphate started elevating, I wanted to uh, take the carbon out of this one that's meant for carbon and put a GFO block in here. So there's another two and a half cups in here. And I took that carbon and one and I put it over here. So I have three uh, GFOs and two carbons st still uh, with no uh, catch. Um, I really like this design, it works great. You can easily control the flow with a half inch ball valve. Uh, if you put a three quarter inch ball valve in there, make sure you put another ball valve in there to control the flow, but half inch ball valves work great. Uh, this is a pellet reactor. 
This pellet reactor is not being used for what most people would use it for. Most people would use this for uh, phosphate nitrate and uh, nitrate control, but uh, uh, I'm using it to take the edge off of some of those items, but mainly to create bacteria to feed the filter feeders in the tank. And it must be working because uh, I have a ton of sponge and I like it the way it looks. A lot of people don't, but I do. And it's growing like crazy. Um, plus this unit's pretty cool. And I've also hooked it up in a similar fashion. Uh, there's also a uh, sterilizer, which is run off the same fashion. Hung on the back of the tank. You can't see it back there, but it's hung on the back side of the sump, much like my reactors are. Water comes in, goes out, dumps in. And there is a uh, um, flow meter on the output um, so I can control the output. The pumps are HY 10,000s from Coral View. They're the bubble blaster. They're the water pushing version that's on the um, bubble blast, uh, bubble plaster Super Eve Octopus. Um, they push about 3,000 gallons a piece. Uh, at eight foot head, they're still pushing 1,000, 1,200, something like that. Um, the pumps are set up to where if one pump goes down, I can shut the ball valve and open the center ball valve and one pump will still feed both sides of the tank. As it is right now, one pump feeds one side and the other pump feeds the other side. Uh, and that's worked out quite well. Um, now the reason for this video is because this free fish over there, who's a member of the family now, uh, he ain't going anywhere, so I have to deal with these phosphates. Now the GFO helps, but you got to change it so much that uh, I just can't afford it. So what I'm doing is um, lanthanum chloride treatments. And um, I'm beginning to think that I don't even have to ever use GFO if I uh, use this. It's dirt cheap. There's a bottle. That's it. It's the Sea Clear phosphate remover and you can verify that it's 100% length from chloride by the uh, MSDS sheet on the C clear website do not use the other brands uh, they have copper in them some other elements that will hurt the fish um, normally you would use IV bag this is a tube feeding bag but it's some same principle um, most fish tanks would use a half an ounce or 15 mils and a thousand liters of water dripped into the sock of your sump use a 10 micron uh, sock nothing bigger and what happens is as the uh, lanthanum chloride hits the water as it mixes in the sock the phosphates precipitate out of the water and it looks like sand or snow and if you use too big of a sock that snow will make it through the sock and then get back in the tank and then the sand that's being made, the phosphate sand, will get lodged in your uh, sand bed or in your rock and then it'll dissolve back into solution. So um, you got to use a small enough sock. Now most people would use 15 mils in a thousand liter bag uh, of DI water and they'd run it through the tank in about you know four or five, six hours and they'd have to change their socks out like every hour because the, the sand clogs the sock up pretty bad. And I was doing that and it works great. But I've had better success by taking three ounces of lanthanum chloride, mixing in a thousand liters of DI water, and dripping it in over the over three or four days in my tank, and uh, that's worked out pretty well. Now I change the socks about every six hours: uh, once in the morning, once when I come home from work, and then once before I go to bed. And uh, 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 I alternate it. That sock I changed about an hour ago. And what happens is the water at water level, it comes out the sock at water level, but as the sock gets clogged up, the water comes out the sock higher and higher and higher and higher and higher. And uh, then I just move the tubing from there to here into the next sock. And then I change that one. And then I let this one run for six hours. Um, these socks, by the way, I got them from Randall's uh, or something of that nature. Uh, bio diesel make it yourself website um, they're four bucks a piece they're fantastically uh, built this is a stainless steel ring in here um, 
cheap, cheap socks. And by the way, 10 micron socks are the way to go. Uh, I've been using 100 and 200 micron. Uh, I'm never using those again. 10 microns all the time. Uh, no holds bar. Awesome. Um, now, if you don't know anything about IV tubing, um, how you set the rate is you watch this drip chamber right here. Um, unless it's meant for pediatrics, um, the drip chamber, 10 drops is a mil. So you get a watch and you figure out how much, how fast you want it to go. And if you want it to go one mil per minute, then you, you set the uh, adjuster knob for 10 drips a minute. If you want it to go two mils an hour, that's 20 drops a minute. Or three mils is 30 drops, etc. You have to do the math and you have to count it. Um, now, if you, if you want the thing running faster, like if you've got a smaller tank and you need to do the two or three hour method, you need to um, uh, not count over a minute, count over, break it down to 15 uh, second intervals and count over that. I'm running about a minute, um, uh, one mil per minute over you know, a couple days. And uh, it's working out great. Um, now this tank, please ignore the husbandry issues of the tank. Um, the water is crystal clear, but you can see there's some algae growing up here. And that's because uh, I've been on vacation for two weeks. And when I, uh, while I was gone, I had my girlfriend feeding the tank pellets to make it easy for her. And um, the tank got a little overfed and we have some, uh, some algae up here now. But... Um, and on the on the glass, which normally doesn't occur, but uh, between the algae filter and the predator fish tank over here, and the length of chloride, that'll all die off in no time at all. Um, that is my length of chloride treatment. Here's what the bottle looks like. This bottle costs 30 bucks. It even comes with free clarifier for your swimming pool. Um, of course, I wouldn't use that in a reef. Um, there's a measure on the side. There's a, if you poke a small hole in the seal up top, you can, uh, don't take the lid, the seal all the way up, just poke a hole. You can turn it upside down and squeeze it out and use this uh, measure device here. Um, this bottle could last a, a reefer in a small tank a lifetime. Um, I think this will last me at least six months a year. And that's not using any GFO. And uh, 30 bucks over a year compared to GFO crisis is pretty uh, pretty good deal. I've seen no ill effects in the fish. The anemones are the soft coral that I have. Uh, admittedly, I am not a chemistry professional, uh, but uh, if you uh, had harder corals or more expensive corals, you may want to be more cautious. But if you just have a fish tank or soft corals or inexpensive corals like I have. Uh, uh, there's been no ill effects whatsoever from this. Uh, thank you very much. Bye.